All right. So before I proceed, I want to apologize for not sending the video of last night, uh, you know, in the day. I had a lot of things that happened and I tried uploading it. It wasn't working. I was trying to upload it to uh, Dropbox and send you the link, but it wasn't working. So I'm hoping that I'll figure out my network and be able to upload it and send to you guys. If it doesn't work after this class, then I'll get your email addresses and forward to everybody. All right, so that said, I would want to welcome everyone again to this class. Uh, tonight's class is going to be rich, short, and of course, impactful. Uh, when I started yesterday, I said something. I'm going to be teaching the things that give money. Okay? I am going to be teaching the things that will give you money as you blog. I'm not going to be teaching nonsense, all right? There are so many things that I can tell you. There are stories. But those are not the things that bring results. So we are going to be focusing squarely on the things that bring results. All right, that is what is very paramount to me, and that is what is most important. So we we'll focus on the things that bring, uh, you know, um, results. And for you to get money, if you're blogging, you need traffic. All right. So we'll be discussing a lot of things around that area. Everything I'm going to teach you from the beginning of this class to the end will be centered on bringing you results will be centered squarely on bringing results, all right? Because at the end of the day, result is the game. If you don't have results for anything you do or for any craft you have, then it is bullshit. It's not making sense. You must have results. You must produce what you want to, uh, you know, to get. So we'll go straight to content um, and SEO. So what is SEO? SEO means search engine optimization. Search engine optimization. Search engine optimization. All right. So there are so many search engines in the world today. We have uh, the big Uncle G, uh, that is Google. We have Yahoo as a search engine. We have Bing as a search engine. Bing is spelled B I N G. So we we'll also have Yandes. We have uh, Doc Doc Go, and a lot of other search engines. So very soon we're going to have Remedy search engine, <laughs> so that you people can begin to use Remedy search engine. I would be excited to have you on board. All right, so. Those are search engines. Now, what, what is the work of search engine? A search engine is a repository of information. A repository of information. These are machines that crawl the internet, crawl the, the web. You and I constitute the internet, all right? You, I, everybody here constitute the internet, all right? So when people post things on the internet, it is the search engine that crawls the internet with what is called spiders. Spiders or crawlers of search engines. They crawl the web to index and save information. So if you go to my website, for instance, and publish a news about yourself, say, uh, Chedema Igwenye is a medical student of EPSU, uh, blah, 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 she's this, she's that, and you publish it on my blog. In the next 24 hours, if you search who is Chidema Igwenyi on Google, it will bring out that information you've published on my, on my blog. So what happens? What happened is that the crawlers of Google has gone to my website and invest that information that is published there. So that if anybody is searching for information about Chidema Igwenyi, Google will be able to serve that person you know, uh, results from the query the person has entered into Google. So that is what search engines essentially do. Search engines are machines that crawl the internet, indexing information and storing same to provide it upon queries. Qu 
queries are questions. Okay, so anything that crosses the website, or sorry, crosses the internet and the web space indexing and storing information for the purposes of you know regurgitating it when you search is search engine. All right. So we'll go to content. Yesterday we talked about niche. Yesterday we talked about niche. So when you choose your niche, your content are those things you post on your blog. Those are your contents. Very simple, very straight to the point. So when we talk about content, we are simply referring to those posts, those videos, those comments, those photographs, every piece of information you upload on your website. Every piece of information that you upload on your website constitutes content, all right? Every piece of information you upload on your website is content. It could be photograph, it could be videos, it could be tests, it could be anything, just about anything. It could even be GIF, okay? Anything you upload on your website, anything you upload on the internet, even when you make posts on Facebook, you are uploading content. You are uploading content, all right? So that is that for content definition of content so what is ranking so i'm going to be sharing my screen with you now so that um, you can see what i'm doing all right please if you can see my screen just um wave you can see my screen right now if you can see my screen just just wave your hand if you can see my screen Hello. Hello. Okay. Some people are waving. They can see my screen. All right. So I suppose everyone here can see my screen. All right. So I suppose everyone here can see my screen. And please, if you're using phone, just turn your phone to landscape mode so that you can see my screen well. Okay? If you're using phone, turn your phone to landscape mode so that you can see my screen well. All right? So, what is ranking? What is ranking? Ranking is simply the arrangement of Ranking is simply the arrangement of search results uh, in search pages. The way search engines arrange results for the questions you ask is ranking. So if we say, um, if we say, who is Buhari? I'll just type Buhari. All right, we are going to do a Google search on Buari. Just the patient, my my network is is great, so to say. All right, I'm going to explain. When it comes up, I will I will show you. The point I'm trying to make is that the way search engines, the way results are arranged when you search for anything on Google is what is called ranking. It's as simple as that. So if I write a content about Buhari, and you too, you write a content about Buhari, and many other people write content about Buhari, okay? Let's say 1,000 bloggers write about Buhari, when somebody searches who is Buhari on Google, uh, Google is going to make the decision of whose content is going to appear first. I don't know if you got that. If 1,000 bloggers, for instance, write on Buhari, who is Buhari, all right? When people search, the whole 1,000 uh, content written by bloggers will not come out, all right? So there's a limit on the page. 
And most of you don't even know that, apart from the first page you used to search on Google, that there are other pages. There are a lot of other pages, so many pages. I don't know why my network is only in this page, but there are so many other. There are so many other pages on Google. All right, so if I search for Buhari, if I search for Buhari, it's going to bring out lots and lots of information about Buhari. So many blog posts. I'm trying to load the track and show you, but I don't know. Yeah, so here we are. All right, we're here. So this is a Google search on Buhari, all right? More than a thousand bloggers, more than 10,000 websites must have published information about Buhari. More than a thousand websites must have written something about Buhari. So whose own is Google going to show first? The determination of whose own they are going to show first to the SATA is what is called ranking. So look at the arrangement of this of this ranking now. The question is who is Buhari or Buhari? You will begin to see that the person that is ranking number one is Wikipedia, wikipedia.org. Wikipedia.org is ranking number one for Buhari. BBC.com is ranking number two. BBC.com is ranking number three. All right? Twitter is number four. Okay? and so on and so forth. Al Jazeera, The Guardian, France 24, all right? And after this first page, after this first page, there are other pages like number two, three, four, five, six, and so on and so forth. Every blogger is struggling to be on this first page because this first page takes almost 90% of the traffic, okay? People who are appearing on this first page take at least 90% of the traffic for this particular question. All right? So, so the question now is, how do you appear here? That is what every blogger is battling with. And that is one of the reasons, the main reasons for this class. All right? So I want you to understand that ranking is simply the arrangement of these things. I'm saying this and I'm repeating it because of uh, some of the new guys that are on board, all right? So ranking is simply the way results appear here so that as we go on in this class, if I begin to teach um, some things about ranking, you, you don't draw us back, all right? So how do you generate content ideas? If you can still hear me, just, just wave. Let me know I'm not talking to myself alone. If you can still hear me, just wave, please. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So how do you generate content ideas? Let's say you've designed your blog, you've uh, even um, you know, taken a niche and um, you want to get started. So how do, you, how do you generate content ideas? How do you generate content ideas? All right, so I'm going to teach you one single strategy that works and it works all the time. All right, this strategy works all the time. It has not failed before, okay? So the thing you're going to do is that you're going to look at the big guys, the big guys in your niche, that is in your own industry, in your own domain. Look at the big guys in your niche and simply copy what they're doing. It's as simple as that, all right? So it is called the, the spy strategy the spy strategy. So you spy on the big guys. The spy strategy entails spying on the big guys in your niche. So like I said before, we'll be teaching, 
Like I said before, we'll be teaching strictly things that go straight to the point. No time for stories, no time for fluff. All right? So you can spy the big guys. Okay? Then you can also use um, Google Trends. There's something called Google Trends. In trends. For those of you in the niche, um, those of you in the niche, um, in the niche of news, if you're watching anything about news, all right? If you're dealing with anything news, you can come to Google Trends and get the latest news for your publication, all right? But if your niche is not news, then I'll be showing you something. So like I said before, you can spy on the big guys in your niche, all right? And identify the kind of content they are writing. Visit their website. You can search, let's say your niche is about, um, is about, um, let's use uh, if it's a niche, which is health. So you can type something like top 10, health blogs in Nigeria, all right? Let's say your target, your target, um, your target audience is Nigeria, all right? So you can just type the top 10, go to Google and search the top 10 or top five or top anything, um, health blogs in Nigeria, all right? So from what we have here, you have this, um, you have a list of websites, no matter what, no matter what your niche is, no matter what your niche is, once you run a search, you will have a list of websites that are performing great, that are performing great in your industry. All right, you will have a list of websites performing great in your industry. All right, so you visit some of those blogs, you will see the kind of contents they are publishing. That will give you an idea of what you should do. All right? That is the spy strategy. Now, to dive further, to know what exactly it is that they are doing that you can rank for, you can use a tool that is called There's a tool called Ahref. Ahref, I'm going to type it in the chat so that you can see. Ahref. All right, so that's the two. I've sent it in the in our group chat. So for you to generate um, ideas on what you can write on, what you can you know rank for, you can use this tool to actually see what those who are doing well in your niche are writing on. All right, what is giving them traffic? Because like I said before, the the summary of of blogging is that you are able to get traffic, all right? If you are not able to get traffic, then it's a waste. You must have the capacity to get traffic. 
And how do you get traffic? By writing on what people are searching for. If you go and write a post about uh, who is um, better do, without prejudice to the great madam in the house, if you write a post on who is better, for instance, you may have just few people searching about Vera. That is right, Abi. If you write a post about CJ, you may likely have just few people searching about CJ. If you write a post about just about anybody in this group, including myself, you may have just few people searching, all right? So you need to know what exactly is bringing these guys traffic. What is giving them their traffic? Because traffic in blogging means money. Traffic means money. So what is bringing these guys traffic? So that what you're going to be writing on is something that people are already searching for. Something that people are already searching for, all right? So that you don't waste your time writing anything. Even if you are going to copy post, of course, I know that most people in this class are going to be copy -posting. Even if you are going to copy post, there's a need for you to know that what you're copying is what people are searching for. Because if people are not searching for that thing, then it's a useless thing. It's very useless. For instance, now, if you write, if you have a content on coronavirus, you know people are searching for corona is trending, all right? If you have a content, um, if you have a content on how to make money blogging, you know people will search, people are searching for stuff like that. But you don't want to leave your faith in the hands of, you know, guesses, in the hands of, um, I agree to one, to one or two. You don't know whether you are just blind about it. You have to be very sure. All right. So the shortest way is to go and carry the big guys in your niche and simply come to Ahrefs and run them. They will, they, this, this particular soft, this particular uh, tool is going to reveal everything you need to know. So we're going to be doing this right now. In my own niche, for instance, one of my biggest competitors is World Scholarship Forum. All right, World Scholarship Forum is one of my biggest competitors. All right, this is a scholarship website. All right, so if I want to know the keywords they are ranking for, if I want to know what they are writing on, what are they writing that is making people to visit their website? What are they ranking? Uh, what are they ranking for? What are they writing that is making Google to rank them? Okay, I will simply copy their website address and come back to Ahref and run a search. So I'm going to get this guy's uh, secret now. Just, just watch out. It's going to be like magic. Vola. All right. So these guys are ranking for 261,000 uh, keywords. And of course, they are with this now. They're getting over over three million page views per, per per month, and that is a lot of money, right? A lot of money. The owner of this website happens to be my friend, Excel Aja. Is the owner of this website? Is my friend. All right. So I want you to look at. Um, my screen right now, you will see what these guys are ranking for. Okay? This tool helps me to bring out everything I need to know. What are these guys ranking for? How many people are searching for it? Okay? And what is their position on Google? And how can I take advantage? So if you look at my screen now, you will see that the first keyword they are ranking for them is. University of Toronto acceptance rate. University of Toronto acceptance rate. If you look at the second uh, this thing, column, you will see volume, 7,100. That is the number of people that used to search for it every month. Every month, every single month, every month. As at now, in the past one month, 7,100 people have searched for it, okay? If you look at CPC, you see that CPC is 6.0, which means that anybody who searches for this thing and lands on your website and click on your advert, Google will pay you six dollars. Does that make sense? 
CPC means cost per click, cost per click. How much advertisers are willing to pay to target traffic coming from or with this keyword? All right. So it also shows me that these guys are ranking number one for this particular keyword. All right. And it shows me the link to the posts link to the post that is ranking them on google that is bringing them this traffic all right and it even goes as far as showing me that they are collecting 1099 visits out of this 7100 like that is like a breakdown of breakdown of breakdown of breakdown all right so i will go as far as clicking on this their link let me know what content they wrote and how did they write it? So look at the content that is making them money through that keyword that is making them rank. University of Toronto acceptance rates for 2020 admission requirements. It was published on April 11th, 2020. All right. Is it that it was published that day or it was updated that day? Anyone? So here, of course, is the content. I can now decide. Based on the information I have here, I can now decide to write something about this content. If I have a very high domain authority, I may even copy this content and I will still rank. Do you understand the points now? Does it make sense? All right. So if you go down, you will begin to see more and more left handed scholarships. Free high school diploma online, no course for adults. Free online Bible courses with certificate for completion. Free high school diploma online, no course. Microwave scholarship with schools, National Geographic internships. Book Achiever scholarship. HP student discount and so on and so forth. What is good about this tool is that it shows you what your computers are ranking for Number one, it shows you the how many people that are searching for that thing they are ranking for. Because like I said before, if you publish content that people are not searching for, you will not get traffic. Do you understand? And if you don't get traffic, then you can make money. For you to make money, you must get traffic. Okay? Even though we're going to um, discuss traffic sources, this is not the only way of getting traffic, all right? It is not the only way of getting traffic. But we're discussing it because we're discussing content and SEO today. So there's a need for us to touch on that. But this is not the only way of getting traffic. As a matter of fact, this is one of the most difficult ways. But the shortest, the shortest ways are seen if you pick, if you pick through this means, you don't pick home. You just be making money, even while you're sleeping. People will just go online and search something. Let's say you're sleeping. Somebody will go and search something that you've written on. And your article will pop up. The person will click. And later on, the person will click on your but you make money. Before you wake up in the morning, you've made money. $50, $100, $200, $500, depending on how many people that have done the clicking. All right? So you may need to be using um, Ahrefs for your research. Ahrefs is a paid and premium tool, but it's very, very, very nice. All right? So you can also use Uber Suggest. Uber Suggest. Uber suggest. I'm going to type it now. Uber suggest. All right. So you are going. You can also use um, Uber suggest. Sorry, it's not. <clears throat> Obama suggests is also a tool that helps you to, you know, do research on keywords. On what people are searching for. So, if for instance I come here and search Chijoki, Chijoki Nwafo, 
For instance, if I search, this is Uber Suggest. So if I come to Uber Suggest and type Chijo Kimwafo. So Uber Suggest is telling me that nobody is searching for Chijo Kim. CJ, my man, nobody knows you. Nobody is searching for Chijo Kim. <laughs> so if I now type something like, uh, let's say, scholarships, or uh, something like study abroad, study abroad, oh my God. Oba suggest is saying that uh, I have to use my account that I'll be free. All right, so if you use Uber Suggest to search for keywords you can possibly rank for, so you have study abroad. I've searched for study abroad, and this search is for United States of America, all right? Because I'm trying to, most times I target audience from US or UK, or Australia, Canada. Those are the guys that pay big money, all right? You can be getting a lot of tra a traffic from Nigeria, and um, let's say you're getting um, 100,000 page views from Nigeria. Anybody who is getting just one or 2,000 page views, page views from US is better than you in terms of making money. All right, so if you look at my screen now, you will see that this is a detailed analysis of the keyword I want to, to write content on. Uber Suggest is showing me that 33,100 people, oh my God, 33,100 people, come on, 33,100 people search for this keyword per month. 33,100 people search, 33,100 searches. There are 33,100 searches for this particular keyword in a month, all right? The difficulty for ranking for this keyword is 37. So it gives you a detailed analysis. I'm going to explain to you what all these analysis mean anyway, but until I get there, for now, I want you to know that some of these tools can actually give you detailed information about you know keywords and therefore give you content ideas that you can write on and like i said before earlier i will repeat it again you write on only what people are searching for that you can rank for not everything like for instance you can write content about Buhari. you will not rank this year you will not rank this year therefore you will not even get any traffic you may not even rank in the next three years when he leaves up you may not even rank Unless, of course, you put all your energy to it, all your resources to it, too. All right? So your job as a blogger is to identify things that people are searching for that you have the capacity to rank for. That is just the major secret. That is the major, major, major secret. And do not let anybody bamboozle you with a lot of things. This is just it. If you are able to do research, to find out keywords, to find out keywords that you can write content around, that people are truly searching for on the internet that you can rank for, when you write content on them and you're ranking for them, they will bring traffic and that will mean money. Does that make sense? If you're following, please just, just wave, wave your hand if you're following. All right, so apart from Ahrefs and Oba Suggest, you can also use Moz, Moz SEO. Moz SEO. Moz SEO. These are um, Uber Suggest is a free tool. Moz is a paid tool. Ahrefs is a paid tool too. Uh, 
these are very premium blogging tools. So many people who are doing blogging don't even know about some of these tools. But these tools are, are very important, so, so, so important. And knowing some of these tools are the things that distinguish you as somebody who is doing well with blogging and somebody who is not doing well, all right? Knowing these tools and knowing how to use them. Knowing the tools and knowing how to use them. Let's, let's look at Moz. So we're going to look at Moz. Moz.com. Moz.com, so we'll log in. Moz.com. All right. So if, if you log into Moz, you can as well do the same thing we did on Ahrefs. Copy, go and check your top computers. Copy their link, come to Moz. You see this link explorer? I will press the person's website address. I don't have to crack my head about, hey God, what am I going to write on? What kind of content will I do? Uh, what kind of content am I going to do? What am I going to write this month to? What am I going to do this month to rank? Blah, 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 all of that. I don't have to bog my head with a lot of all of those things. So all I need to do to find content ideas is to take the blog link of of my major computers, come to Moz or Ahrefs, run it. I will see all their keywords. I will see all their keywords. So look at their keywords. You are going to see the keywords they are ranking for. Any website, just about any website, any website at all. Any website at all. Now, the good thing about this is that it doesn't just break it down. It gives you a filter system for you to filter it. But we're going to get to that point where I will show you how to use, uh, I'll show you how to use all these filters to filter your searches and know which contents to write on. All right, so I will, Talk about keywords. I've been talking about keywords, keywords, keywords. Most of you don't know what is keywords. Keywords is what, what helps you, what your content is all about, all right? The, the focus of your content is your keyword. The focus of your content is your keyword, all right? So if you're writing about a mom and Dara's death, all right? A mom and Dara has died. The state of health of mom and Dara becomes your keyword all right that is what google uh you know looks at when they are ranking people for instance if you write a content and say google the keyword the intention of this content is buhari's um government or is buhari's element or is buhari's anything so when somebody searches for where is buhari who is buhari what is Buhari doing? Google will be able to determine and say, okay, somebody so and so place has written a content about this. And the person has specified that this keyword, this particular phrase, this particular phrase is the keyword of this content. And it relates to what so and so person is searching for. All right, so they will serve it. So you use keywords also to generate, of course, content ideas. And that is what we were doing before. That if I want to get keywords that I will rank for on Google, what I have to do is to copy the link address of my computers, the big ones, the big guys. I will copy their link. Come to Ahrefs or, of course, Moz. Paste it and run a check of all the keywords they're ranking for of all the keywords are ranking for. Now, before you choose, how do you choose, how do you choose um, the, the content you have to write? 
How do you choose content that you can rank for? How do you identify and choose content that you can rank for? You use keyword difficulty. If you look at this, my screen now, you'll see that 7,100 persons are ranking for this, uh, sorry, are searching for this um, keyword, University of Toronto acceptance rate. It has 7,100 7, searches in a month, all right? So if you look at the next thing, you will see KD. This KD means keyword difficulty, keyword difficulty. Keyword difficulty means how difficult is it for you to appear on Google if you write on this keyword? If you write about this keyword, if you write a content about this keyword, how difficult is it for you to appear on Google? How difficult is it for you to appear on the first page of Google? Remember I told you before that those who appear on the first page of Google search take up to 90, if not above 90%. And that is why in blogging, we say that if you want to hide anything forever, Put it on the second page of Google. Put it on the second page of Google. If you want to hide anything in blogging, put it on the second page of Google. That shows that very few people go to the second page of Google. Almost everybody that searches for a particular thing ends up. Even some of you that are in this class now, you don't know that Google has other pages. Once you search and you don't say anything, you leave. There are other pages, there are other pages, more than, more than 100, more than 200 pages of Google for every search that you input. So how do you know that you can rank for a certain keyword? For instance, this University of Toronto acceptance rate. How do you know that if you write a similar content to what this guy has written, that you are going to rank for what he's ranking for? How do you know? You use what is called keyword difficulty. Keyword difficulty really is not a certified, um, Google has been trying to deny it, but it has worked for, for years and it will continue to work because it is true and that is how it is. So you use what is called keyword difficulty. It is from one, it is measured from zero to 100, 100 being the, the highest. So it means that if you search for a particular keyword and you're seeing the keyword difficulty as 100, my brother, just leave it alone. Though. Leave it alone, all right? And of course, when you start blogging, there's something called domain authority. Domain authority is the authority your domain commands, all right? That authority your domain commands, which of course comes over time, is what you use to determine which keyword difficulty is okay for you. For instance, my domain has about 27 uh, domain authority. So if I see content, if I see keyword, keyword ideas that have keyword difficulty of 27 and below, it means I can write for it and I can rank. Does that make sense? I said there's something called domain authority. Domain authority is like, um, is like the power you command on the internet. The power you command on the internet, right? It is ranked between zero. It is ranked between zero to 100. Your domain authority, which is called DA, domain authority, is the power you command on search engines, the kind of power and strength your domain has. We're going to, to teach how to increase that over time, all right? But the kind of power, the kind of authority, the kind of uh, you know, influence you wield in search engine is called domain authority. And I'm going to show you how to check your domain authority. When you get started, you'll be able to check your domain authority and see how it grows. So let's say that the domain authority of your blog is 27, like my own, for instance, is 27. And I come here and I copy the, the, the website address of my computer and I place it here and I run a search and I see that he's ranking for a keyword. And I want to rank for that keyword. I will go and check the keyword difficulty. And I told you that the keyword difficulty is what determines how hard it is for you to rank for a particular keyword. How hard it is for you to rank for a particular keyword. And it is measured from zero to 100. So if the keyword difficulty of a particular keyword is two or five or 10 or 20, and my domain authority is 27, it means I can rank for it. Does that make sense? Does 
some of you are just looking at me. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So the summary of what I've said is that for you to rank for certain keywords, just make sure as you're doing your research, just make sure that your domain authority, the contents, the keywords you're writing content on, whatever you're writing about, just make sure that the keyword difficulty is less than your domain authority. Make sure that your KD, KD is less than DA. DA is above KD. KD means keyword difficulty. DA means domain authority. So before you write the content, know and be sure that your domain authority is above your domain authority is above the keyword difficulty of that keyword you want to use and write your content. That's the summary. So for instance, if I want to write anything, if I want to write anything and I copy the link of my computer and I come here and run it, I will first of all check the volume and see that they are the, 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 the keyword is receiving 7,100. Now, don't mind the, the numbers. The numbers is like this because it's scholarship. It's not news. It's not music. If it's news or music, you'll be seeing like 1 million searches, 100,000 searches, uh, 500,000 searches, 200,000 searches. But this is my niche, and this is how it is. All right? So the first now check is the volume. How many searches? How many searches? is this keyword receiving in a month. So you will see that it is 7,200. I will proceed to say, what is the keyword difficulty? Remember I told you that the, my domain authority is 27. So the keyword difficulty of this particular keyword is two. So if my domain authority is 27 and keyword difficulty is two, it means I can rank for this, right? It means I can choose this keyword and I can write on it and that I would like a rank on the first page. All right? However, at this point, let me point out something. The keyword difficulty of Ahrefs is incorrect. Is inaccurate. Keyword difficulty of Ahrefs is The keyword difficulty of Ahrefs is in incorrect, but their search volume, every other thing, every other thing on Ahrefs seems to be correct according to the researchers and according to my experience. All right, everything on Ahrefs, apart from, apart from, apart from, apart from their their keyword difficulty, is correct. So, for the purposes of um, keyword difficulty, I use MOOS. Most is much more, is much more, I feel is much more correct. All right. So if I want to see the keyword difficulty of that particular keyword, I'll come here and run it. All right. So if you look at my screen now, you will see that. Uh, most is showing us that this keyword has up to 4,300 searches per month, from 2,900 to 4,300 searches per month. The keyword difficulty is actually 34. Does that make sense? All right. So most is telling me that it's 34. That is the keyword difficulty. All right. How difficult it is. Just if you want to understand it, just put. Put your mind on percentage. Just look at it as percentage. If you want to write, what is the percentage? What, what are the chances that you will rank for this thing? And collect traffic and, of course, collect money. Because at the end of this thing, all these things boils down to money. So what is the possibility of you ranking? Remember that your domain authority has to be greater than the keyword difficulty you're writing on. Of course, even if your domain authority is lower, sometimes you can rank. If you know what you're doing in SEO, you can rank. Yes, given. But if you are a beginner, if you are a beginner, make sure that your keyword difficulty is always less than your domain authority. 
always less than your domain authority. Very, 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 very important. Very, very important. So since my domain authority is 27, and this keyword difficulty is 34, will I still write on it? CJ, will I write on this? My domain authority is 27. Keyword difficulty I'm writing on is 34. Should I go ahead and write? The answer is no, obviously. I will not go ahead and write because the chances of not uh, ranking is very high. All right? So like I said before, your keyword difficulty has to be lesser than your domain authority. Your domain authority has to be more than the keyword difficulty to make it easy for you to rank. Easier, much more easier for you to rank. Now, what keyword research does for you is that keyword research saves you all the stress of wasting your time. What is the point that I wake up now and decide to write content about Buhari and I'll take the whole day for instance, working on content and editing content and doing a lot of things, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the year, I will never rank for it. What is the point? It's a waste of time. And that is why so many people are frustrated with blogging. And that is why many people quit. Because they are doing the things that are not what they should do. So you want to blog. You now go and be copying news about Buhari, the copy news about Ngozo Konjiwa, the copy news about Osi Banjo, the copy news about David Dumai, the copy news about people, people that big time websites are struggling to have you know, the, the, them as keywords, to have their names and news about them as keywords. You copy them as a beginner. You will not go anywhere. You will just keep on doing it. After one month, you get tired. You say blogging does not pay. Blogging is a scam. Blogging is this, blogging is that. You will drop out. You will not make money and you will get frustrated and you will leave. Why is this so? Because you are trying to rank for things you cannot rank for. Why is this so also? Because you did not do any research. You are not given to research. And why is this so? Because you don't even know. You don't know the tools to use. You don't know how to do it. You don't know how it is done. All right? So still on the, the spy strategy, Still on the spy strategy. And I want to let us dive into the main thing and show you how to single out the things you can rank for very, very easily. Very, very easily. Reasonably, reasonably easily. All right. So we'll dive into the main thing now. Now, look at this. If I am looking for keyword ideas to rank for, I'll, like I said before, I'll get the link of my computer that is big enough. Very big guys. I'll copy that link, come to Ahrefs and run it. So when I run it, I will see all their keywords. But I cannot run for all their keywords because they are above me. So I will save all the big ones and select only the small ones I can rank for. So how do you do that? There are features for you to do that. So if you look at my screen now, you will see search volume. Search volume. If you want to, if you want to save their keywords by sad volume. You can say, okay, those that are giving, uh, those that have up to 1,000 search volumes, show up. Those that have up to 100 search volumes in a month, show up. Those that have up to 1,000, 1 billion, 1 million, show up, all right? But I don't use that. I use keyword difficulty because what I am looking at is what I can rank for. Do you understand? Something I can rank for that is already bringing traffic. The most important thing about this strategy is that what you're going to be writing on are things that are already being searched for. It's not a try and error game. It is not try and error. It's something that is already being searched for. People are searching for it already. And what you are trying to do is to select the ones that, that are your met. Okay, because everybody has level. On the internet, everybody has level. The same way in life, everybody has level in life. So you look for your met, your keyword met, the one that you can deal with, the one that you can conquer, the one that you can defeat. So you come under CPC and type, sorry, under keyword difficulty. 
and type zero to whatever you want. If your keyword, I'm um, sorry, if your domain authority is 10, we can type zero to 10. If your domain authority is 20, you can type zero to 20. If your domain authority is 30, you can type zero to 29 or 30. If your domain authority, if you're just starting out and your domain authority is like five, you can type zero to five. So that the things you're going to see to write on will be things you can rank for, the things that your domain authority can defeat on Google page. How is he able to defeat it? Because there are not too much competition. The big guys are not really looking at those. So you're going to grab all those fruits here and there, all those hanging lower fruits here and there, and you combine it and you're getting traffic and money will start flowing in. All right? So for instance, my domain authority is uh, 27. So I'm going to touch on it like zero to 25. And I'll click on apply. So it will sieve out, it will sieve out all the keywords of this guy. All the all his keywords that are below zero that are between zero and twenty-five. Zero and twenty-five. Zero and twenty-five. So every keyword I'm going to see here are keywords that are between that, that frame that I've set, that those limits I've set. So that if I am to copy all of these things and write on them, I don't have to struggle so much. Does that make sense? If it does make sense, just do something. It could be wave, it could be typing, it could be anything. Just do, do something. Let me know I'm not talking to myself alone. Let me know people are following. You can just type 111 and type 222. You can just wave, you can do just about anything. Just about anything. Yeah, that's great. That's great. That's great. That is very great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's nice. Now I know that people are following. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it is very important. I am repeating this thing because if you fail this step, you have failed in blogging. If you don't know how to do keyword research to get keywords that you can rank for, you are not going anywhere. There is money. There's a lot of money in this ministry. So much money in this ministry, in dollars and in pounds. Because you can decide and say, Google, I don't want dollars. Please pay me in pounds. For instance, last week I opened a website that Google will pay me in pounds. I'm tired of dollars. I don't want dollars again. Because, for instance, if I make um, $10,000, $10,000 this month, for instance, if I make $10,000, it will be, if you multiply it by exchange rate, to be 4.4 4 million naira, right? 4.4 million naira. But if that money is paid to me in pounds, it will be around 5.3 million naira. That is almost 1 million naira loss. And it is the same strength I will use to make $10,000 that I will use to make 10,000 pounds. And the same money is coming from the same company, which is Google. All right? So you will lose almost 900,000. So if you decide to switch and say, my items should be pounds, good enough. So there's a lot of money on this street. But if you don't get this thing, you are not going anywhere. You are not going anywhere. And you will become a frustrated blogger. And you will give up. And you will have it in your mind that blogging does not work. It works. It does work. Some of us are living test testament to that. We are living test testimonies that, that this thing works. So it is very important to understand how to do keyword research. And I'm giving you one strategy. One strategy that works any day, any time. The spy strategy. The spy strategy. It saves you a lot of stress. You don't have time for nonsense. All right? Those keywords you are going to get, for instance, if you look at my screen now, all these things you're seeing are keywords. All these things you're seeing are keywords. I can decide to write, to write on just about any of them. If I do further research, I will not choose any of them and write on. These are keywords that this guy is ranking for. I don't have to begin to crack my head. What should I rank for? What is What are people searching for? I don't have to crack my head about it. I will just get the keyword of all the guys that are in, in my niche, that are top, top, top in my niche. 
I will get their link, come here, run it. If I run it, I will see the keywords. I will not use keyword difficulty to select the one I want to rank. For instance, I've, I've typed in zero to 25. I can even go as far as saying, okay, I want only those that are being searched for, say from 200 searches and above. 200 searches and above, all right? Let's say I don't want to rank for small, small keywords. I don't want to rank for small, small keywords, all right? So I want to rank for keywords that have searches from 200 and above in a month. Now, the research I've done now shows me that in US, this guy has 200, um, sorry, keywords that have 200 searches up to 8,842. 8,842. Even if this thing is giving him just 20, 20 page views in a day, one day, here we go, it's money, big money, a lot of money, a whole lot of money. Now, apart from US, in India, he has keywords of 3,933. Do you know how long it will take you to do research to find out even just 30 of such keywords? A lot of time. In Nigeria, he has 2,197. In, um, in Turkey, he has 1,894. In Indonesia, he has 1,600. Thailand, 1,300 and something. Brazil, 1,000 something. Mexico, 1,000 something. Canada, 998. Pakistan, uh, Philippines, Italy, South Africa, Malaysia, Spain, Egypt. So many countries of the world, all right? UK, Vietnam, France, Germany, Japan. People are searching from everywhere. Poland, Algeria, Bangladesh, everywhere you can think of. So what this spy strategy does for you is to spy on the big guys. Spy on the big guys. And most times, the big guys are focusing on the big, big keywords, big, big keywords that have a lot of search volumes. You, your job as a very tactical and talented blogger is to focus on those ones that you can, you can catch, those ones you can capture, those ones you can beat, those ones you can grab to yourself. All right? So if you start out, of course, you may not be making up to $10,000 in a month, but you can be getting like 1K which is over 400,000, 3K, you know, something like that. So if you're able to grab all those low hanging fruits that these big guys, like, let me show you an example now. Okay, look at this. I, I transplant a, AOC, okay? I transplant AOC hmm? is a keyword. The search volume is 400, okay? Keyword difficulty is zero. Kabarasa. If you write on this and you search and you use most to search and you discover that the keyword difficulty is actually zero, like this now. If you write on this thing now, you will rank. Why? Because these guys don't have interest in this 400. They don't have interest. It is very small to them. They are big guys. They are doing a lot of big things. So they don't care about such keywords. They are not interested in keywords of 400. They are not even interested in keywords of 1,000, 1,500, 600. 600, 450, all right? But if you, as a, an upcoming blogger, can, can employ a lot of wisdom and capture all these small, small keywords, it will now converge to become uh, a very long list, bringing you a lot of, oh my God. Bringing you a lot of traffic, all right? Reasonable traffic, at least for a start. So please, as you go on with blogging after the series of this class, utilize, utilize, utilize the spy strategy as much as you can. I understand that AHREF and most are very costly. AHREF, for instance, is about 180 something dollars per month. That's about, about 1,000 something per year. Most is also expensive, however, I'm going to show you how to get that thing for almost for free. Almost for free. People can even come together as if it will not cost you even, even 200 naira. The same thing that is costing hundreds of thousands. It will not cost. I will show you how to get it for almost for free so that your research, your articles, your, your website will be based 
on research. If you go to my website, scholarsarena.net, you will find out that I have less than 80 contents now. When I started that, um, that blog in 2017, I was just copying things and posting and posting and posting. I had over 2,500 contents, 2,500 or something contents, and they were not ranking. Why? Because I wasn't doing the right thing. I wasn't doing the right thing. It was, it's not about populating everywhere with content. It's about which one can you rank for? If you're not ranking for this keyword and it's not bringing you money, it is nonsense. <clears throat> It's a lot of nonsense. So why write about Buari? Why write about Osibanjo? Why write about the uh, United Nations? Why write about the Donald Trump? You can't rank for those because of those who are ranking for it. You can't. You can't. So this price strategy gives you access to very concrete information that you can use. You can utilize it to your advantage. You can use it to rank. You can use it to draw traffic and make money. I cannot emphasize this enough. I cannot emphasize this enough. So once you identify your niche, let's say it's about health or law or smartphones or computers or whatever it is, or even weight loss or anything, once you identify your niche, go to Google and search the top five people in your niche or top 10 people in that your niche. Let's say it's about law blogs. You something like top 10 law blogs in Nigeria. Top 10 law blogs in the world. Google will bring out results. Simply copy the website address of those big guys. Copy their website address. Come to Ahrefs. Run it on Ahrefs. It will bring out every keyword they're ranking for. Now, put your eyes on the ground. Set your keyword difficulty to match your domain authority. All right? When you set your keyword difficulty to match your domain authority, you can now run you know, uh, another, another search to sift is crazy. Somebody sent me a time. I don't know. To sift, thank you very much. If it's from this class, anybody who sent me a time, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate about one k a time or so. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate. So when you get into Ahrefs, you paste the 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 address of that person, the link, the website address of that person. First, it, Ahrefs is going to bring out every single keyword of that person. Then you now sift out the small, small guys, the ones that have very low keyword difficulty that is in accordance with the domain, all right, domain authority. You sift them out, copy them out, and try to write something about it. If you don't have time to write something about it, you can even go online and check what has been written about it. Search it. Copy what has been written about it. Edit it in your own word. Edit it in your own word and publish it. In a little while, you rank. You may not start ranking that week. You may not start ranking that week or even the following week, but in a little while, you rank. Why? Because you have done a research. Because the content you're publishing is based on research is based on concrete information, is based on what you've seen, is based on what is reliable, is not based on hearsay. All right, so that way you are able to rank, uh, rank for, for keywords on Google and you get traffic. If you have uh, 50 contents, 50 contents on your website, 50, and each of them is bringing you say 100, 100 views, Okay, per day, that is 5,000. 100 visitors, 100 visitors per day, that is 5,000. Now, assume that those 5,000 persons visited just three pages before they left. That is 15,000 page views. If these guys are from US, for instance, if they are from US, eh? And you have a click-through rate of, say, 20%. 20% or even 10%. And again, your CPC is like 0 0.20. You must get at least $300 that day. You must get $300. If those guys are from US or from some other top countries, you must get up to $300. You must get up to $300. What comes to cost? $300, $250, you collect it. And that is over $100,000 in one day. 
over 100k and all raise eyes there are people that collect over a million naira in a day single day single day all right so please know and learn this thing the spy strategy spy, strategy. spy on the big guys collect their small small keyword and rank for it and collect traffic and collect money okay so that is that by this uh, discussion i've also covered a lot of things i used to I've covered what is keyword difficulty. Keyword difficulty is just um, how difficult it is to rank for a certain keyword. It is measured from zero to 100. So 100 being the highest. If keyword is 70, 80, 60, 50, it is very, very, very difficult to rank for. And why is it difficult? Because there are many big guys that are ranking for it. We did a search on Buhari. I'll do that again. We did a search on Buhari. Okay. Buhari. Okay, we saw the kind of website ranking for Buhari. All right. So you see Wikipedia, BBC, Al Jazeera, Twitter, um, CNN, and so on and so on. All right. So these are big guys that are very, very tough to, to beat in the game because they have been around for so long. And because they've been around for so long, their domain authority has increased. Some of them have up to 90, 95 domain authority. So it's very difficult to use a, a DA or five to come and pursue them. Very, very difficult. It's like saying Google is a businessman and he has been doing business for, for many years with my website, for instance. And he has given my website authority. He has trusted my website enough that I'm going to bring out what is good. So if I write about Remedy Wanko and you come and copy it, Google will still trust mine because Google has been trusting me over the years, but you, you're a new guy. Does that make sense? If you write about, say, um, um, Uncle Mike, and I come and copy it, because I've been in business with Google for so long, Google will believe that you are the one that stole my content. So they will rank me. Why? Because my domain authority is high. I have been dealing with them for many years. For instance, do you understand it now? So that is why it is very important that you target keywords you can only rank for. Stop wasting your time. Don't waste your time. You don't have time to waste. Take all those time you waste and spend it on research, doing keyword research. Target your opponents. Target those guys who are doing great things. Collect their keywords. Write on them because they are not even, they don't even care about those small, small things. They are not focusing on those things. So collect them, overtake them overtake them in those small small keywords collect the traffic 1000 q uh, 1000 page views from us in a day is enough to make you a millionaire is enough to make you a millionaire is enough very 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 much enough 1000 2000 page views from us a day, a day is enough to make you a millionaire and there's no exaggeration about this all right so i have covered keyword difficulty i've explained to you what keywords are all right so I will show you. I want to show you where, where they used to put keyword. For those of you who have never done blogging before, <clears throat> let me show you where they used to put keyword, all right? So that uh, it will not sound like Roque science to you. Yesterday we talked about how to log into Yesterday we talked about how to log into a WordPress website. I don't know if you still remember. We talked about how to log into a WordPress website. All right. All right, so we talked about how to log into a WordPress website. My network is terrible, very terrible. Very terrible. It's not loading this website. I want to show you where, where, where you can put keywords, where they used to put keywords, all right? So that you have an idea of what it is. If I write a content about 
about um, Don't worry, don't worry. If I write the content about left-handed scholarships, Linda and Samson, two of my content writers, are in this group. They are in this class. I am hoping that uh, after learning all these things, you people will not say you're not working again. <laughs> I hope you will not resign. No. I am hoping and trusting God that my content writers will not resign after learning blogging they will now resign and run away okay so uh read um linda and samson you must remember writing this content for me you should remember left-handed scholarships left-handed scholarships that was the first the very first content i gave to you guys to write for me when we started working together think about a month ago two months ago all right so if, for instance, I write something about this content now, what I'm going to use as my keyword is left-handed scholarships. I could even go as far as making further research to know other variants of this particular keyword that I can use. But the primary keyword will be this thing. I will now look for variants of that keyword so that, of course, I can have um, I can have good uh, can have good ranking. All right, so maybe maybe in our next class, we'll be looking at uh, technical SEO because what we've, what we've done now is um, what we have done now is off-site off-site SEO. That is what we've taught today. So tomorrow we'll be looking at technical SEO. So we're looking at technical SEO. I'm going to show you where keyword used to be so that it will not be rocket science for you. So tomorrow I'll show you. Maybe my network will be better then. I'll show you where keyword used to be. So I've talked about ranking. I've talked about how to generate key, um, content ideas. I've talked about uh, keywords. I've talked about how to do keyword research, which is what I've been doing and which is the most important thing. So I've also talked about keyword difficulty. If the keyword difficulty is above your domain authority, please, happy hacker, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. If you are going to succeed with blogging, start seeing blogging as business. Blogging is a business, it's not a passion. If you're here because it's your passion, please leave this, this group. You don't, you don't have to be here. Okay? There is nothing passionate about, about what we do. It's business, strictly business. And most people who make money are not making money from passion. That Gote does not have passion for cement. Okay? Most people who are making a lot of money, most of our billionaires, they don't have... Mark Zuckerberg does not have passion for codes, Facebook codes and all of that. Jeff Bezos does not have passion in selling pants on, on, on Amazon. There's no passion in that. It's money. It is business that is driven on data. It's as simple as that. So... You must treat your blog as business, strictly business. And if you're treating your blog as business, you don't just wake up and write content. You don't just wake up and copy something. You don't just wake up and do something. You must do research and know that what you're writing or copying is something you have reasonable chances of ranking. Because at the end of the day, if you don't rank, then it's not making sense. It is bullshit. Okay. So the last thing I'll be talking about, okay, not the last thing anyway, the, the quality of content. That is the second to the last thing we're going to talk about this night. And as for number seven, the tools you are going to use for keyword research. I've mentioned three. Those are the three I use basically. I use two. The third one is just, is just there. Over suggest is just there. But the major ones I use is Ahrefs and most. I use Ahrefs to search for keywords because they give me accurate data in terms of volume and everything else, everything else. Then I use Moz to check the difficulty. Moz gives me better and much more accurate keyword difficulty. Do you understand? So you two can do the same, but 
you can decide to rely on ahref alone okay but for me i check the keyword difficulty of every content i want to put out all right so the second to the last thing we're going to talk about tonight is content quality and duplicate content issues okay so before i will talk about that i want you to know that anything you write on your blog is food for google okay google does not eat rice google does not eat apple google does not eat spaghetti your content is google's food not just google search engine generally because when you have a site you will submit it to most search engines and search engines will come and crawl your website with their crawlers with their spiders so when you publish content you are saying google come oh, food done done food is ready food is ready come and eat google come and eat okay so when google comes to eat your food and realize that it is food that in Kechi has given to it google will just get angry do you understand so that is why those who copy and paste don't succeed do you know why now because they think those who copy and paste don't succeed they hardly succeed unless of course it's those big guys those big guys even when they copy and paste they still succeed though this is crazy are you kidding me right All right, so those uh, big guys, when they copy, they still succeed because they are already big in the industry. They are already big. Please don't for, uh, don't worry about questions. I'm going to ask. I just realized that a lot of um, a lot of questions are flying in. Don't worry, we are just like ten minutes away from closing, so don't worry. Our classes will be one 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 hour thirty minutes, one hour for for lectures and 30 minutes for for questions all right so when you have contents that are already somewhere else on your blog google will take it with a pinch of salt google will take it with a pinch of salt so if i publish content and you copy it and the maker copies it david copies it uh timothy copies it emmanuel copies it Chukwebuka copies it everybody copies it without editing without adding extra value without using your own word to rewrite that content hmm? it becomes it, it becomes um, a terrible thing it becomes something very difficult it becomes something that google does not want to eat it's like a sour food it's like food that's quiet it's like food that is over refrigerated it's like food that is going to waste it's about something like that is not good enough so it becomes bad for google all right then again if you publish content on your website and publish it again google will not like it because you are giving them the same food you had given to them before google does not want to eat the same food twice so we cannot to give fresh content fresh food google is like a man who doesn't eat uh, leftover food they want their food to be fresh so give it to them fresh Give it to them as it is hot, all right? And again, when you're tagging, when you're making your posts, when we're going to do a technical SEO tomorrow, if you're making your posts, ensure that you don't tag so many categories. Of course, we're going to teach that. I'm going to elaborate on that. Because if you tag so many categories, Google tends to see it as um, duplicate content on your website because they will, crawl, they will crawl this category, they will see the same content, they will go to another category, they will still see Buhari. They will go to category C, they will still see Buhari. They will go to category D, they will still see Buhari. And so on and so forth. So the last thing we are going to talk about tonight is backlinks. I'm just going to, to explain what it is, but it's part of technical SEO. So we're going to discuss it tomorrow, not tonight, but I'm going to explain what it is. Backlinks is just... Um, links coming from other sites to your website links coming from other sites to your website if i write a content and you copy it and post on your blog and it has link to my website that is backlink that is backlink 
Now, as many people that copy that content and give me credit for it, I'll have backlinks. What that backlink means is like, is like thumbs up, is like kudos. So when Google sees that you have backlinks from different places, genuine backlinks, so not all these uh, spammy backlinks. Once Google sees that you have quality backlinks from quality websites, they will pass domain authority to you. Your domain authority is going to increase because the juice from those big websites you're getting links from are passing to your domain, all right? I'm going to show you examples tomorrow. I'm going to break it down. In the meantime, if you have questions, please um, kindly go ahead. If you have questions for tonight, I am going to unmute everybody. All right, so who is raising hand? Let me know who I'm going to unmute. Who is raising hand? Okay, so what do we have here? Okay, some people are saying we should chat about it that if we, okay, we can just do a few, then the rest can drop their questions in the group. All right, so CJ has a question. All right. Um, I'll go Sunday. Okay. Who are those raising hand? Hand raisers. Hand raisers number one. I don't even know why the mute button does not want to. Okay. Only you are on, please. Only. Onyechi, CJ, you're on. Ah, uh, Onyechi, if you can hear me, you're on. You can talk. It's like your your this thing is mute from your end. All right, so if you have question, you can ask. I've decided to unmute everybody. Am I talking to myself in this class? This is crazy. Can people still see me? Hello. Okay, if you can, if you can hear me, the network is quite terrible. I think I'll just end the meeting. Everybody, you can. Only. Oh, this is crazy, man. Eh? 